Hey everyone, Pastor George here, and today I'm back. Uh, back from the wild, wild west. It's uh, good to be back, and I am here with our theologue for today. Originally, I was planning on doing one on GA, and I still might in the future, but I got a question about General Assembly, which I'll probably save for next, well, this Thursday, so I'll, I'll be able to talk a little bit more about it then at that time. So today I thought I would do a fun one because one of the movies that came out right when I was leaving for, right before, but I didn't get a chance to see it, but right when I was leaving for vacation is the new Thor movie, Thor uh, Love and Thunder. And so I wanted to talk about uh, uh, that movie. Um, and I'm just going to start off by saying spoilers, not only for this movie, but for all the Thor movies. So if you care about movies that came out 10 trillion years ago and you still haven't seen them, then somehow it's my fault if I tell you the plot of what's happened in them. So just uh, just spoiler alert for those who are sensitive to such things. Um, so anyway, the, th the, the reason I think that this movie's worth talking about, right, because I see lots of movies. The reason I th think this one is, is worth talking about is this is probably the only time that Marvel ever talks about anything that could be close to being like a theological theme, um, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the reason that I, I that I say this is because in the movie, the main plot involves a guy who uh, was slighted by his god, and so he goes around killing gods, right? Um, now, it, it, of course, they they have to be very careful with how they do all of these these things and and stuff like that. So it's only pagan or like gods of religions that aren't really followed by anyone anymore, right? So you're not going to see Jesus or or you know other you know, modern gods in in that um there may have been some hindus hindu gods but i, I can't remember um there's this scene where you see a bunch of them at once uh but the point of it is is that it's actually kind of interesting because the reason that this guy feels slighted is because he asked this god to save him and his daughter and the god did it and uh and then you know it turns out that it's some you know just fat, slovenly God who doesn't care about his people or whatever. And so at the core is that is is that question of theodicy, right? Like why do bad things happen if gods can stop them? Why don't why don't they? Uh, and basically this guy makes it his whole point to become this, you know, raging anti-theist to try and kill all these gods and show their followers that it's not worth following them because they can't protect them. Right. Um and so that's what, and of course, Thor, being the Viking, the Norse, whatever, god of thunder, tries to stop this from happening. Now, uh, unfortunately, they don't really deal with that theme all that much. One of the big problems of the movie is that uh, it, it kind of just ends up being a, a joke fest. And I don't have a problem with being quippy or whatever. But the problem is, is that when moments are serious, they need to be treated seriously. And unfortunately, a lot of the times in this movie that that kind of is tossed to the wayside in favor of like one-liners and stuff like that. Um, and so it ends up making the point of the movie kind of diluted, uh, where I think they could have been a little bit more risky. And I was kind of disappointed with that because Taika Waititi, who directed the last Thor movie, which is really good, or Ragnarok, um, I was hoping that, you know, I was like, oh, well, if there's anyone that can handle this with some brevity and maybe a little bit of um, with, with still time for, to talk about these things to Tim, but, it, um, you know, it didn't happen. So that's kind of unfortunate, but it did make me think a lot about kind of the differences or the way that people perceive the divine, uh, in our popular culture, right? Like gods or God and, uh, and what is actually presented for us in scripture. So in this movie, right, all the gods are just kind of chilling and they have their own little realm or reality or planet and they called, uh, omnipotence i think it's called and they all live there together and the king of all the gods is zeus and they all kind of just sit around hiding there uh, not really having to do anything because uh they, they're worried that this guy is going to kill them right and so they all just kind of stay there and you know have orgies and live opulently and all these other types of things right and i think that that's actually largely true of of a lot of the pagan deities um and i don't say this is like a knock or something like that but that's how they were perceived at the time because you have to remember the way that a lot of people perceive the gods um in the ancient world was just as like humans but who live forever so they have all the faults and uh desires and things like that that humans have right that's not like the God of the Bible, right? Who is a being outside of time and is not human or not even a bigger form of human, right? Uh, it's just, uh, he's just completely a, a, a different being from us, the creator, right? Um, and I think it's interesting that, 
the, it, it kind of takes a lot of the problems that we have. And what I mean by we, I mean like modern people have with with religion and this idea of like, why do these bad things happen? Why do, 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 don't the gods do anything? But the interesting thing is for the people from whom these cultures come from, they would have understood why their gods don't do anything. And it's because they didn't sacrifice to them appropriately. It's because maybe they just don't like them. Right. And they would have that's what the Greeks believed in the Romans. And that would have been a normal thing to think about. But within the Christian sphere, uh, the Christian way of thinking, that is not how we view the divine, right? We view the divine as someone who cares for us deeply. And so we're able to have these moral quandaries where we go, well, if these bad things happen, where is God in these things, right? Um, he certain, And I think it's important to, to contrast this is in Christianity, God would have every right to hide away and not do anything, but he doesn't because that's not part of his nature, right? He cares about love. He cares about justice. And so I think it's important to contrast these things and see how it's easy to take our critiques and put them on other places. But really the, the problem is, is that, uh, is that we really don't see these, um, these things as we should, uh, or we see them in, in ways where we kind of warp everything together. The last point I had, and this is a big spoiler again. So the, the, the villain is ultimately defeated because Thor and his girlfriend show love to each other, which is a big theme in the movie is love, right? And the idea here is that this guy, all he wants is is, is love. Um, and because he didn't get that, you know, he, he ends up going on a killing spree. And I think that that's fine. It's again, it's very modern. What I would put there instead is that what this guy wants is power. Right, because he wasn't able to do anything, his God wasn't going to be able to do anything, and so he ends up making people do what he wants. Right, I think that would have been a bad, it kind of feels a little ham fisted at the end there. Um, it's not a bad theme, but it ends up not really following with what this guy is doing. Right, it's not like he was lacking love, he loved his daughter so much, and he was taken away from him by you know this thing, and so he ends up going and killing God, a God who didn't do this and then goes uh, to help him. And does this thing. so it's not to me more like he wanted power, power to stop his daughter from dying, power to do what he wants. And so he goes around killing gods who he thinks are the most powerful. So that's what I would have ended. I think that would have been a little bit stronger, but you know, in the modern world, we're all about love is all you need, you know, that type of thing. So regardless, it, it was fine. Um, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's a, like a Christian movie. It's not trying to be, so I'm not going to, you know, don't get after me when you, you know, see all the gay romance stuff in it. All right. I'm just saying that this is, that, that that's, that's what takes place in it. So I don't know. I enjoyed it. Um, mostly I don't think it's as strong as the last one. Uh, I do wish you like he did a better job at balancing like in the last movie, but whatever it's, it's fine. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next, uh, not next Thursday, this Thursday. Well, actually tomorrow as well for Bible study. Whatever, you're going to see me again. It's good to be back. Hope you all had a wonderful week without me. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.